Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this TEFL org webinar about career paths in the EFL industry and the TEFL industry. Um, my name is Carl. I will be um, conducting this webinar and I will be telling you a bit about the different sort of career paths that you can go through at the moment. Now, um, although this webinar is about career paths, I would really love it if you could ask me any sort of questions that you have at all about TEFL, about how to get into TEFL or online teaching, because I know that's a big thing that we're hearing a lot about at the moment. Um, so please, any questions at all, please type them into the chat box. And I might not answer them straight away, but I will get round to them as I see them. And please, because I think the more interactive these webinars are, the better. Uh, so please don't be afraid to ask any sort of question at all. Um, we would, I will try and answer it. If not, um, there's some people monitoring this webinar um, who have lots of knowledge as well, and they can type the answer to the question. So if we could all start by just typing in your name and where you are in the world, because that would really make me happy to know that there's people all over the world uh, watching these. We, we've, we've had Australia, New Zealand. I'm in Ireland, in Northern Ireland. We've had people in Brazil, Cape Town, South Africa, New Zealand, very far away places. So please just say hello. Hello, Mohammed. Thank you very much for saying hello. Um, please just type your name and just hello where you are in the world that would make me very happy while we are doing that because there's often a little bit of a delay between the typing and it coming through to me i'll tell you a little bit about me my name is carl i am the weekend classroom tutor so i usually do the practical courses for tefl org here in belfast northern ireland and I'm not a I'm not from here. I'm originally from London. I moved over a few years ago. Um, TEFL Org is not my main job. Uh, my main job is as a teacher or a teacher trainer. My current work involves teaching at an English university, and I teach on their academic courses there. Um, but I'm also an examiner of uh, English for a couple of the big exam boards that work in the industry. I also do teacher training. I might have said that. And I have taught for about 15 years plus, just about plus. And um, I've taught in big parts of the world. Sorry, wrong shoulder. Big parts of the world, uh, Vietnam, Japan, Sri Lanka, Azerbaijan. I taught in Iraq for a bit. I taught in South Africa for a bit. Um, where else have I taught? Uh, the UK, um, Kazakhstan. I taught there for a bit. I've taught in China as well. So look, thank you very much. Let's see who, who have we got in at the moment. A um, couple of questions already coming in, which is lovely. Please, any questions on TEFL, please ask them. Hello, Douglas. You're on. Congratulations. Hello, Liz in Sheffield. Douglas in Surrey, Roland in London. Hello, Roland. Uh, Catherine from Bristol. Love Bristol. Carol in As Essex. I think you've been on before, Carol. Hello again. Adam in Poland. Sean, thank you for your question there. Um, Gregorsk, I probably mispronounced that. I'm sorry. In Birmingham. Hello. And the Inverness Chamber of Commerce. Okay, show offs. But that sounds very posh. Uh, right. Let's. Well, before I start talking about career paths, let's just ask a couple, answer a couple of these questions that have come in already. Um, so, Sean, hello. Do you see a big challenge for business English demand at the moment? Because normally it would be in person, classes to groups, and it mostly companies with some budget to spend. Yes, Sean. I think that's a very good point that you've mentioned there about the companies with some budget to spend. Um, one of the big uh, recruiters of Business English is oil companies um, around the world. And when the oil price is high, they often have a lot of money to spend on training. I have worked for a couple of oil companies in the past. It's usually quite lucrative. 
Um, so maybe at the moment there's not much demand from companies for business English, but I think there's a lot of demand from individuals at the moment for business English because they the, the job sector is quite competitive now. Um, lots of people have lost jobs, so they might they you might have individuals who are looking to improve their business English that will help them to get a job in the future. So I really think the demand from individuals I've had myself, I have a, a teaching website and I've had quite a few people emailing me, contacting me about business English classes, for example, presentations. They want to work on presentations or they want to work on business interviews techniques. So that kind of thing. Um, so I do think that is um, something that could happen. I think you're right to say that at the moment, business spending on teaching English is quite low down the list. But I think that is starting to grow back. And there are companies in Japan and in China and Asia that want to do that kind of thing. So definitely um, look, it's coming back, it will come back. Business English has never gone away. Um, but perhaps go after individuals instead of companies at the moment. Now, I can't see any other questions, actually. I think I've, I think I scrolled that wrong because we only just started. Um, how I love that name. Kuratal. Is, did I say that right? Hello. Kuratalin. Hello in London. Julie in Netherlands. Cubes in Manchester. Louise in France. And no problem, Sean. Right. So let me talk a bit about my journey uh, in a TEFL career. So I started about 15 years ago on an initial teacher training course. And that took me, I, I did the course to go teach abroad. Um, this was the online teaching wasn't really a thing 15 uh, to 20 years ago. And I started by going to Vietnam and I worked in uh, as a teacher there, um, just a general English teacher teaching any sort of different types of levels of English um, in actually it was a university but it was more like a language school than a university they called themselves a university but it was more like a language school teaching that I did and did that for a couple of years and then and, and that was a really great start and that is generally how most people start their teaching career they start with some sort of um they start with some sort of general English. And by that, that means that the students aren't really working towards a specific qualification straight away. They might get there eventually, but they're not looking for some sort of exam. They're not looking for any sort of real purpose for their English. They just generally want to improve their English. Once they get to a level, then they might go into certain things that they the students really want, such as passing an IELTS test or moving into business English or moving into academic English. But general English is generally where people start. And that's how I started. And from that, I then went to Japan and I worked for a university. And after about three or four years of my Vietnam experience and my Japanese experience, uh, general English, I started to think, OK, this is the type of teaching that I like. And the type of teaching that I liked was um teaching and still is is teaching to exams basically so i kind of started to go to do a few individual courses about how to teach for specific exams i started trying to um learn more about these exams and this is while i was working for a company and they started to give me more classes specific to that and I kind of then went with that throughout like the next few years of my teaching. And I enjoy doing that. But what I would say is at the, if you're quite open to teaching any sort of uh, English, you will probably get more jobs because you don't actually see that many jobs advertised for one specific type of uh, English teaching. However, when you get to an interview, if you can show that you're open to all sorts of teaching, but you have lots of experience in this, it does tend to give you a bit of a it just should, it does a, a bit of emphasis in, in the recruitment process. It does tend to show that you're a little bit maybe more serious about teaching than if you are um, just keep on teaching generally. 
then as the as you get more experience you tend to move to more senior roles within the industry so it could be something like you move to become a senior teacher and from that you might observe newly qualified teachers and you might get a bit more money or reduced teaching hours not always as you go up a grade you get more money in the efl industry or if you do it's not that much um and then you start to manage some teachers so that's kind of how you go on the general English route. You start teaching anything and then you get a little bit more specialized. And then from there, maybe you'll start to um, manage people um, within a teaching team, depending on the size. So that takes me to managerial um, positions, which I will go on to um, next. Okay after i've answered a couple of questions so uh hello everyone that said hello sean uh, tracy hello hi mark are there any good chinese flexible companies um I, i'm not quite sure what you mean by flexible companies i'm sorry mark if you can if you can give me a bit more information um yes on our there are look china's first into the uh covid problem and probably they're going to be the first ones out of it so they um they have they're starting to open up and i have seen jobs that start to be that they're starting to recruit again because a lot of teachers left china and they're now coming back there are oh thanks for that i'll go with that and then um there are tefl jobs for Chinese companies advertised on our tefl.org website and there are um, uh, other websites as well such as eslcafe.com where they are advertising and I would start with that now thanks for this about in terms of offering flexible hours and a company that is honest um, now I think one of the problems that people have is they, they worry about the honesty of companies. And what I would say to you is very often company, I've never had a problem with the honesty level of my employees, employers ever. The only problems I've had have been in the UK, I must admit, not in China or abroad in Asia. I think if you get things in writing that you want before you go, very often they well, 99.9% .9 in my time, they have stuck to that and they have been very, you know, very honest in that way. Terms of offering flexible hours is difficult. If you go to work for a company, you have to work when they tell you to. And quite often in Asia, that is before work and after work, because if the people are, if the students are working, they can't do the classes during the day. So in terms of flexible hours, working for a company is a bit difficult. The only real way to have flexible hours is to um, be your own boss. But that is difficult when you first start and working for a company. Um, interesting question. Uh, Douglas, hello. Other than oil companies, where else have you found successful contracts from in terms of sectors? Um, love your profile picture as well there, Douglas. Um, finance companies. Uh, definitely uh, have employed me i don't business english isn't really my thing i don't really go looking for business english i don't overly enjoy it but i have taught business english in china and japan and they um but that was through companies not through myself uh they but and the companies i work for are some oil companies um and which I work for in Iraq because there's lots of oil in Iraq. Uh, also, I work for some financial companies um, and uh, sort of tourism companies. Although it's a, it's a bad time at the moment for tourism companies, but that's some of the ones I've worked for before, hotel chains and that kind of thing. OK, um, but I go down. Think about the money. Follow the money, Douglas. Rich sectors have more money generally. OK, Catherine, hello. Um, Catherine, I'm just starting on my TEFL journey. I have a degree in language. Congratulations. Uh, which course should I choose, which would allow me to travel and or work online? Um, so I would really recommend our 120 hour course, um, online 
do that and then if you could then do it with some sort of practical course once they start it once once we start running those again or we have recently started to run the practical side of things online as well um uh i would definitely go 120 hours is the key that's what most employers look for go for that okay that will allow you to teach online and also will allow you to go work for companies okay um a degree in language will really help you as well to go from that i hope that answers your question catherine adam any reliable recruitment agencies companies in china again so we've got that reliable uh word again uh i think look for the big recruiters look for ones that you find online that have, that have advertised in different websites they tend to have the most numbers they tend to um look for ones that sort of set in stone how you're going to get paid when you're going to get paid um how much you're going to get paid and also uh what you need to do in the interviews you kind of get that kind of feel from how how reliable they are from their adverts if you if it's an advert for one or two lines they, they you know they might be new to the business you might might want to i'm not saying you have to but you might want to keep away from them if you are worried about that okay hi bambi i've heard i've remember your name as well um alan i've just started my online tech course and fast approaching 60. i uh, don't uh would like to teach in asia would my age go against me as 65 seems to be the upper limit of recruiting um right uh alan you know i, I don't want to sound uh, time is not on your side in that terms of things I would get yourself moving. 65 can be a cutoff because of visa regulations put on by the company, by the countries and also in terms of insurance. OK, for health insurance. So um, I would get moving on that, Alan, if that is really something that you want to do. OK, uh, her. I don't I hope that answered your question, Alan. Emma, Emma, hello again. You, you're often on these ones. It's good to see you again. Lots of companies want teachers to prepare for the Cambridge exams. As a new teacher, how should I learn about this? Okay. Uh, the first, I, I'm guessing you're looking at Spain, Emma, because that Cambridge exams are really quite big in Spain, uh, Spain and Italy. Um, right. The first way to learn about it is to download a, a test yourself and do it yourself. Don't pay for a test. Look for a practice test online and go from there. Take the test yourself and um, see if, and have a look at how the test is outlined. Look at the different sections. Look at what the students need to do. That's the first one that you need to do. That's the first thing you need to do. Then um, secondly, look online for how to teach Cambridge exams. Look at some general ideas about this kind of thing. Um, there's some forums for the Cambridge exams on Facebook that you might be able to find. Um, I'm sure with a bit of digging, you'll be able to find those. Look at textbooks for those exams. Look at how they're taught within the textbooks and kind of learn from that, okay? Um, go from that. And I think, again, this is something that, that will help you stand out from other applicants okay uh mark online chinese companies well i'll get to online teaching in a minute if that's okay mark after i've just read hello robin in south africa i wish i was in south africa had a lot of good times in cape town uh catherine no problem roland hello i'm not looking to be an employee but self-employed language graduate professional background in language testing many years in business now looking for a career change is the self-employed market over crowded and ronan what a lovely um if that's you i love your mustache very jealous of your mustache um is it overcrowded no i don't think it's overcrowded to be honest i mean the, the i think at the moment there are a lot of people looking for online work okay but i get the feeling that maybe a lot of them are temporary this is one of the reasons why we're sort of talking about the careers which i'm going to get back onto in a minute because it, TEFL can be a career. Um, I don't think it's overcrowded. I think you need to sell what you've got, Roland, which is you're a language graduate. You have a professional background in language testing, many years in business. Sell yourself and stand out from the crowd. Okay. 
I think that there are definitely opportunities out there for people that want to work for it. And there are definitely opportunities for people um, who are willing and, and, and good teachers to, who want to learn more about the industry and want to really help the students. So I think with that kind of background you got there, Roland, I don't think it would be oversaturated for you. Um, right, Sean, this is an interesting one. What do you make of the Teaching English Online programs? Typically, Magic Pill Solutions speak fluent in three months, saying all traditional English teaching is defunct. Um, I don't think I'm allowed to swear on this. Um, I think I think uh, the owner of this this uh, webinar might be looking, so I'm not going to I'm not going to um, say what I really think of that using certain words. Um, I would say that there are a lot of websites. I mean, for for all time, there's always been some sort of, oh, look at this. This is the new way to learn a language. I remember that. I think it was called Suggestopedia in the 70s, where they kind of made people get a little bit drunk when they learned a language. And they said, OK, this is the best way to learn a language. There's always going to be some sort of fad because people want to learn a language quickly. Um, I, I don't there's but something that keeps going throughout the the whole language learning industry is a teacher you know there's always been teachers um that that are there okay so i really don't think that learning a language online in three months is possible myself um yes that's what i think I think it, there's always something that says, oh, this could be the end of EFL. This is the end of learning a language. But still, there's always a teacher at the other side that comes through it. Uh, Catherine, what makes the TEFL org courses better than other organizations running TEFL courses? Nice question. Thank you. Um, OK, few things. Uh, first of all, you, the tutors are all people like me who have lots of experience in the industry and have lots of um, qualifications. For example, I have, just to tell you off, I have a, a bachelor's degree in English language teaching. I have a certificate of English language teaching to adults. I have a diploma in English language teaching to adults. I have a master's in English language teaching, and I have a certificate in English language teaching management. That's just me. I'm just one tutor. We often talk to each other. We have conferences where we share knowledge, that kind of thing. So the first thing is um, teachers. OK, I think the, the tutors on the courses are good. Uh, excellent. And secondly, um, the certification levels. Um, uh, sorry, the accreditation levels of our accreditors are, are, are very high. They're known in the field and they're known in the business. They are checked themselves. The accreditors are checked. Uh, the accreditation people are accredited, that kind of thing. And that it really is important because anybody could write a TEFL course and then accredit themselves by setting up an accreditation body. OK, you need to check the accreditation, click on the links, go through the links, look at the accreditors. And we're more than happy for you to do that on our website and for our courses. And that is the two things, the tutors and the um, accreditation levels. And then just look at look at reviews. Look at look at, you know, um, you know, reputable reviews, websites, that kind of things where they review the uh, a company and look how long that company's been going for, because companies come and go when they promise things that they can't deliver in the TEFL industry. OK, hope that answers your question, Catherine. Uh, Emma, hello. Looking at Spain. Well done. Go to Spain. Get yourself a nice tan. Enjoy a sang uh, sangria. Uh, good, Roland. Hello, Sean. Again, thank you. Zulao, what a beautiful name. Would you need a degree as well as TEFL certificate, TEFL certificate to teach abroad? Also, can you teach English in UK only with TEFL certificate? Thank you. Uh, Zulao, you, let's go with the teach abroad uh, certificate without a degree. Yes, that is possible. I have had people on my weekend course in, Belf in Belfast who've done the 120-hour course and then done the pro practical course and are flying all around the world at the moment seeing um, the world, okay? So that is possible. And there is a link on the TEFL org website where we talk about teaching abroad without a degree. I recommend you read that link. 
Uh, can you teach English in UK? Yes, you can at um, private language schools. So there are language schools that will take people on with a, with only, I'm going to say only, as you put there, a TEFL certificate. There are people, there are companies that will do that. There are jobs that you will find that do that. So look for them. They tend to be in the big main cities, Edinburgh, London, um, Liverpool, Manchester, Cardiff, that kind of thing. Look for jobs. Uh, going and teaching in the colleges is a bit more difficult. With in the main, like higher education and further education colleges, is a little bit more difficult without uh, with without a degree. But it's still possible. I know people that have done that. Uh, Catherine, good to be worried about courses before you decide that. Um, good. Uh, right, uh, right, Mark. So you, you're asking about CELTA courses there, Mark Marsden. Hello. Um, I'm going to bring that in with the with the the career process, if that's okay, because I think I've, I've kind of gone a bit off topic now of what I wanted to talk about and the topic of this webinar. So once you've once you've been in the industry for a, a couple of years, what tends to happen is People think, OK, do you know what? I've just had a lovely few years teaching abroad or teaching online, that kind of thing. But now I, I want to go back home and I'm not really that I don't really love the teaching. I've just had a great time. I've got a few quid in my pocket. I've seen a big chunk of the world and I just want to go home. And then they don't um, they don't really teach anymore. I know plenty of people that, that do that. They do a few years and and, and that's great. Um, what you might find after you've been doing it for four or five years is actually I love it. And if you're in a country where you are really happy and you're really, um, uh, you know, you feel really settled, that kind of thing, then you might um, you might you'll, you'll probably be OK staying in that country with all the experience you've got of living in that country with your with your TEFL certification. OK. But if you're starting to think, OK, do you know what? I'd like to move up to maybe managing a school, becoming a director of studies, um, that kind of thing. Or you could go into the fields of being an examiner, like a Cambridge examiner or an IELTS examiner or um, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of some other. I've lost my train of thought. What's the other um, tests? I can't remember. There's TEF, IELTS, uh, Pearson, sorry, Pearson. Uh, Trinity, uh, Cambridge, now they're all flooding back to me. If you want to become then an examiner in that kind of thing, then you might need to look at something like a CELTA or something like a DELTA, okay? Um, but I would not recommend if you're new to teaching that you go straight for a CELTA. I would recommend you do something like a 120 hour course and you see if you like it because those CELTA certifications are expensive. They also take a lot of time, up to a month full time. And they also have, you know, a, a, a lot of people don't enjoy them and don't get through them from my experience. OK, so uh, I would recommend that you start with some sort of online 120 hour course. See if you like it. A few years later, then you might start to think about doing a CELTA or then you might start to think about doing other types of qualifications, such as a level five qualification. We offer a level five qualification, which goes into more detail, um, which will open more doors to you, that kind of that kind of thing. So if you after you've done some general English and you feel you like it, yes, I like this industry, then you might move into things like examining uh, or you might move into things like management or both of them, because that's how I did it. I went to start to manage schools for the British Council. And when I was managing one of those schools, they trained me up as an examiner in IELTS. And from there, I uh, I got um, I got work through that and, and that kind of thing. Um, and that's a path that you might want to take after you've been doing ELT for a few years. But I really think at the moment, the best if you're new to it, the best thing to do is to do some sort of online course. See if you like it. Get your head around it. Do you enjoy it? Go teach abroad or go teach online because they'll both work. OK, the 120 hour course will work for teaching online or for teaching 
um, abroad in physically in a classroom and just see if you enjoy it and go from there. OK, so I don't know if we can just highlight Mark's question again. Uh, good options for sell to courses that would be good for online and face to face teaching for a relatively new teacher for about one year. I see. I wouldn't if you are a relatively new TEFL teacher within the one year, if you've if you've not if you've already got your 120 hour certificate, I'd look about doing something like a level five certificate, maybe something like that to add, uh, which um, is we're available from us. Um, and then I, I I still think within a year, are you sure you're going to be a TEFL teacher forever? If you think you're going to be a TEFL teacher forever, then start looking at the CELTA. But I think at the moment, just keep going, Mark, for another year, 18 months, see what you can do, because you're, a CELTA doesn't really necessarily help you with online jobs. Online jobs, they often look for just a TEFL certification, like the one that we do. They don't necessarily look for a CELTA for good online job, jobs. OK. Um, thank you for that uh, one there. Uh, Sean, uh, sorry, maybe you said it already. Is there an official qualification you get to be a recognised teacher of Cambridge exams? Uh, you can't. Um, I'm not a Cambridge examiner. So I'm sure I wonder if anybody else on this chat is a Cambridge examiner. I th very often with these exam boards, you have to wait for them to advertise the jobs and then you apply once those jobs are advertised. So that's how I have got my examiner jobs is by looking at, you know, every month looking at the websites for these uh, exam boards, the official exam boards, and then seeing if they have the jobs available there. That's how I've got my exam jobs there. OK. Um, all right. I hope that answers your question. Thanks, Sean. Uh, no. Uh, yeah. Roland agreed. All uh, right. Shamiala. I'm sorry if I've mispronounced that. I have an engineering degree and bachelor of science degree. OK, well done. Self-employed at present. And the pandemic has meant I was unable to look for work. Many people are in that position. Um, Looking for options for work from home, so book TEFL course. Once pandemic restrictions start returning to normal in the UK, would it be possible to get part-time working classroom with just the TEFL level five? Uh, yes, I would say that it, um, there is definitely options to get part-time work in a classroom. I don't know where you are in the world. Sorry, in the UK. It looks like you're in the UK. I don't know where you are in the UK. That If you're in a big, bigger city, one of the bigger cities, I would say that there's definitely options. If you're in a rural town where not there's not many tourists, um, that kind of thing, you you know, there's not many university students there. You might struggle to do that. Um, but I think definitely in language schools, they would be open to you uh, helping them out and, and teaching with them. OK, uh, Douglas, hourly rates for online jobs seem very low. Any kind of rates of pay for this sort of work? Um, Right. OK, so when you start, the rates of pay aren't going to be great. I don't know where you are in your teaching life, Douglas. You know, you're not going to go straight in at 30, 35 dollars an hour generally with, with the companies. They have to take their cut. They're also um, the rate does depend on you. If you live in London, um, you might think that the rate of pay is low. If you live in somewhere like Northern Ireland, you you might not think it's that low. OK, so the rate of pay does depend on your perspective of what is low. OK, because remember, they you know, the whole world can pretty much apply for them. Not not no, the whole world is wrong, but, you know, USA, UK, Australia, that kind of thing. You know, there's a big mix of people that can apply for it. So, um I think the guide is difficult. Now, we have a TEFL, we have a page, I think, on the um, TEFL org blogs, which does indicate things like hourly pay. So you might want to have a look at that and see if that helps you. OK, um, good. Carmelina, hello. Is it hard to teach in the Middle East with just 120 hours difficult or do you need more? Um, right. Uh phew. Middle East is, you, you know, you're, you're quite broad there with the Middle East. I don't know what country in particular you want to work in. Um, quite often in the Middle East, they do look for a degree 
but I know people that work in Dubai with just 120 hour certificates, um, no degree. But the, what they did is they flew out there. They took a chance. They flew out there and got the job once they were out there. Um, but uh, it's it's not the easiest of places to teach with with just a certificate but it is definitely possible and it's worth reaching out to to the people advertising for jobs now and say look this is me can i have a job because at the moment they might be some sort of desperation for for um teachers if a lot of their teachers have left uh adam hello is it common for the chinese employers to expect a language degree from uk university for non-natives like myself ivan MA, a PGC, a CELTA, wow, from the UK. And last week, a lady in China said it was a big problem. None of my degrees was in English language. Um, I, I, but a CELTA is, you need to have a certain level of English to do a CELTA, don't you? I think you would, I would reply to that recruiter and say, um, look, these are the language requirements to do a CELTA that is, that is held by Cambridge uh university publishing whatever it is whoever owns the cell so i can't remember off the top of my head um and you have to have ielts don't you have to have like a equivalent of like ielts nine or something like that to be a cell to tutor i don't know so i would reply with her and say reply to her and say um look this is a situation and to do a pgce you've got to have this okay i i think i think it try and politely educate that lovely recruiter okay no problem mark sean um yeah, Sean, uh, watch this again. I answered the question about 20 minutes ago on that, I think, about how to uh, um, become a specialised in preparing students for that. OK, uh, there we go. Um, good. Uh, you're looking at Egypt, Carmelina. OK, Egypt is one of the easiest places to go without um, a, a degree because it's not one of the more popular places to go and teach. Generally, the countries that are popular for people to teach in tend to ask for more sort of um, some sort of uh, uh, more qualifications. OK, right. So um, just come to the end now. So. Uh, right. So then once you get to be a manager of a centre, then that kind of involves teaching. Um, so looking after everything. So that means looking after timetabling. That means looking after the observations, maybe writing the syllabuses. Maybe also you might be in charge. We're well, not in charge, but you might get involved in the marketing of courses, arranging the level testing. So you do need to have experience of general English before you can get into the managerial positions. OK. Um, so I think. You know, you start generally. So to summarize, start as a general English teacher, then move into maybe more specialization of your teaching. From that, you might get more roles. You might get a role as a senior teacher. You might get more um, specific roles, which sometimes not often pays more, but sometimes does pay more. Then from that, you might move into becoming an examiner um, of a of a, a English in from one of the boards or and and or you might move into becoming a senior teacher or a director of studies where you sort of manage it. There are definitely job routes within TEFL. If you're new to TEFL and you think, oh, and it's absolutely fine for people to get into TEFL just to think, OK, do you know, what? I just want to go and travel the world a little bit. And that is absolutely fine. I think that's a, is a fantastic, amazing job to do that. However, you can also make a um you can also make a career out of this. I can't see myself ever leaving um, TEFL. I really enjoy it. Even now I'm back in the UK and I'm not going to be traveling anytime soon. OK, I really think it, you can definitely make a career out of it. OK, I'm just going to mop up a couple of more of these questions. Uh, Adam, you, we're back to the lady, are we? OK, uh, did she say? But Adam, I'm a bit I'm a bit confused because you don't you have to have a degree to do an ma or to do a pgc but that degree was not in an english speaking country or just a masters were not in a speaking country adam look I, I, if you message because it's quite a specialized question if you want to message the page um i'll get the tefl people to ask me that question i'll see if i can re write a reply to you okay 
Um, I think this could be the last question. Uh, Mark, sorry for another question. Don't be sorry. We love the questions. 168hourtefl.org.uk. Does it repeat materials in the level four course for tefl.org.uk that I have done already? Um, I wonder if someone can answer that for me because I'm uh, not actually quite sure because I'm not one of the online tutors and I don't want to give you the wrong information, Mark. Um, I don't know whether um, Alan, who's reading the chat, helping me out here, I don't know whether you can answer that one for me. Right, I don't think there's any more questions. I think I've I gone through them, have I whistled through them? I'm just gonna have a quick glass of water and just see if there's any more questions that come in. No, I don't think there are. Okay, we've been going 40 minutes, which is a good old chunk of time. Thank you, everyone, for watching this uh, webinar. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I got to answer your questions. I hope from it, we've gone on lots of tangents from our main topic of career. What I would hope that you got from it is that, yes, it can be a fantastic little trip, a little way to get abroad, but... It can also definitely be a career path that you can um, go through and you can spend a lot of time, um, spend 20, 30, 40 years as a TEFL. There are so many different routes in the TEFL industry. And it's a really good basic way is to start with your online course, your 120 hour course, go from there. You might love TEFL. I really enjoy teaching English. I really enjoy teaching, uh, training people to teach English. It's given me a great life. Um, and I know plenty of people as well that have stuck in TEFL and have gone through the career path and are, have spent a long time doing it. Okay. Uh, it's enjoyable. It's fantastic. It gives you a really good, really enjoyable life, I think, TEFL as a whole. And it can also just get you through a year of just not having much work to do or just a year teaching in Spain, something like that. Um, but I think it really, you really can get a good career path out of it. Um, thank you everybody. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Really enjoy it. Um, really enjoyed listening to your questions. I love them. We've got another one next week. Tune in next Friday. It's at a slightly different time, but please, I love seeing the same faces keep coming back and some of the new people as well. Thank you very much, Julie. No problem. Elizabeth, Roland, Sean, Catherine, Elizabeth again. No problem. Douglas, well done. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy your Fridays. Have a good weekend. Okay. Bye, everyone. Cheers.